and welcome into What the Music. Boy, do we have a jam-packed show for you. I am uh, very excited uh, for my next guests, uh, Gina and the Eastern Bloc. Uh, of course, I have Gina with me and Mark uh, from the band. Extremely excited uh, to be talking about everything you guys are doing. Of course, we just heard the song, The Insanity. And uh, we will be talking in a moment about the video which I was able to see and which I implore everyone to see. I'm going to have that video as well as another video that we're going to be talking about on the show notes. So make sure to go check that out. And for more information on Gina, uh, make sure to check her out on her website, GinaAndTheEasternBlock.com. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, what what's up, up? Turtle? Good to see you. Your green specs. Nice to lovely. see you again. Yes. I know. It has been very long. The first time I met you guys was at the Alley Pop Art out there in, of course, Los Angeles. You guys performed. You guys, were, I believe, were the headlining act and blew my mind. It was uh, such a treat to see you perform and um, to hear your sound because one of the best like descriptions of your sound what that that you told me was it was beefy as fuck and you still maintain that you know i still have that in my brain uh from that interview and uh, it was a really cool um you know to have you guys on and stuff like that have you been maintaining this beefy as fuck uh sound uh throughout uh, this time i think yes I mean, it's definitely what I gravitate toward, and I know Mark loves it as well. So when we are creating our songs and writing, producing, recording, all that, I'm always like, add more 808. I'm like, give me that kick drum. I'm like, Mark, I want it to sound like, and I always do this massive fart noise to explain how beefy I actually want it, because I want that to rumble the club and shake the walls, and I want it heavy. What do you think? Yeah. That's a, exactly Every right. song, it has Gina, to rumble. <laughs> Gina, Gina has a, she comes from a, a, I guess some of her like favorite artists uh, are hip hop artists actually. So there's a lot of like low end, obviously in hip hop. So we try to integrate that in our songs. Absolutely. Beef. That's the beef. And metal. She it's like hip hop, metal, mash those together and give me the heaviest beefy as fuck sound you can. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I was watching your Fantal video that you did. Yeah, and there, there, you describe everything that you have in your background right there. It was super cool to just get that insight. But one of the first things that, that you mentioned was uh, your love for Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yes! Favorite, one of my favorite groups of all time. What, why is that? I, I'm, I'm very curious as to why. I mean, they're a great, don't get me wrong, they're a great band. I'm just curious why you gravitated towards them. Yeah, I mean, I grew up on it. And so from childhood, I was all about it, about it. But now listening to their album from 1999, is 19, okay, yeah, 99, my favorite album, um, it's just still good. It's classic. Their flow is so hypnotizing, and I love all the layers of vocals and how there's harmonies going on. <laughs> Sorry. And then, like, the main rapper, and they're so fast, and it's just wild. They have a sound that nobody else really has, and I think artists today are sort of trying to tap into that, mainly, like, Ghost Main. He kind of has this Bone Thugs and Harmony flow. I don't know. I just love it. Uh it's so good because it's lyrical, but it's also nasty and stanky and hip hop. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets it all combined uh, in between. Um, you know, speaking of uh, adding all those different textures and layers, you know, off offline we were talking kind of just about the the musical production element in everything. Of course, of course, we were talking about my background in the recording studio. And I was saying that this is what people imagine a recording studio is for the most part. But for me, you know, I think a recording studio doesn't need all these bells and whistles. I mean, it's great. And, you know, people are super impressed anytime they come into a studio kind of like this. But uh, with the way gear is now, you can really create an affordable studio without the luxury of all the space. Um, but what are your thoughts on that, Mark? I know we mean yeah. you were talking a lot about that. For sure. Um, I mean, look, there's nothing that takes the place of the magic of a real bonafide recording studio. 
You know, it's great to be in that environment where you, it's conducive to creating, where you're just, you're just in that creative zone and everything around you just speaks to you of creativity. That's great. Uh, however, you can certainly accomplish a lot of the same things that you used to have to go and spend, you know, a thousand dollars a day at a big studio. And you can do that at home. Uh, you, but you, you could be lacking the create, sort of the creative vibe around you. So, so yeah, I mean, a lot of people record at home. I do. We record a lot of our stuff. I recorded the drums. Uh, in, in bigger studios, but then we come back and I, you know, do the guitars and we have a vocal booth here we've made and, um, that's great. But as long as we try to create some vibe, even if it's just like candles, you know, or it's like, uh, some lighting, as long as I think at least you can, you can sort of, uh, give the performer something that they feel spe, the environment where they feel special. I think that's, um, that, that's most important or else it's just, you know, it's, it's like a, you don't, it's an unmemorable experience, and that sort of stinks. I remember all the records I've made in major studios, you know? And when I, when I do a lot of stuff at home, I, sometimes I don't remember, so I have to create a scenario that I remember. But it's awesome that we can still do this because with all of the plugins and anything you can get that's digital, I mean, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I sort of do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You can come up with any sound you want. So you can record some janky guitar sound, not that you ever want to be janky, but throw it through some plugins and it sounds like what 1950s Gibson straight off of uh, Elvis's hands. Yes. <laughs> However, there's no plugin that substitutes the performer and the performance. Yeah. You can enhance it, but it's still got to be like coming from your heart, you know? You know what? And you are absolutely right. And I believe this is a perfect segue into the video of insanity because that song a was dope as fuck. Um, and the, the video was truly about the performance because it was a simple video, but it was dark at the same time. And how was it that you were able to balance those two things in that performance? Well, we are, of course, all in quarantine lockdown at this time when we're filming the video. So we had to be creative, think about how we could shoot using our resources, how we can get this feeling across, because the song is so massive, you know, in a, in a way it deserves this massive video shoot with extreme elements and all sorts of things, but we're like, hmm, this is DIY, we're putting this together ourselves, let's just get weird with our personalities to display how dark the song is, you know, using ourselves as the prop. What else did we do? Oh, we had this um, projector. Oh. So this is our big trick. I don't know. We were just trying. <laughs> Letting to all the secrets we, out, huh? <laughs> you know, we used our garage. We used our garage we for that one. We transformed the living room in our place. We put up a giant black background. And um, you know, what we decided to do is we, we bought a projector, and we found these cool images uh, that we had had someone else create for us. And we literally projected those images onto us and onto the wall to give it something that was unique uh, and, and something that, you know, kind of gave it that sort of darkness. I mean, the, the stuff we shot, we shot a lot of stuff in our garage, too, which is really industrial looking. And, you know, we do have some we bought some lights. We have lights and we have we have, you know, minimal production stuff. Um, but um, but I think it's really just just like we're talking about performing, uh, recording music at home as opposed to studio. You know, if you're if you're doing that in your garage in a video and it's honest and you're just trying to be as creative as you can and you're honest about it, then I think you can convey the same message yeah. in a garage as opposed to in a giant sound studio. So hopefully we did that. That was the objective at least. And I think people don't know how much you can actually do on your own as a DIY or independent artist or whatever you want. People are just wait around and like, oh, maybe one day the record label will provide me a music video, but until then, like, I don't know what to do. But it's as easy as getting some lights, working out a cool set, finding your lighting, being creative, spilling out your performance, all of that. Like, coming up with your own wardrobe that represents you. Just, there's so many things you can do on your own. So that's what we really like to do, obviously, because <laughs> we do it all the time. And it works out well. Uh, again, it, it truly does uh, just come off seamless. Let's talk a little bit more about the song Insanity, which is out now. And uh, for more information, go ahead, log on to Gina and the Eastern Block, uh, dot com for more information. Of course, I'll have all the links to the IGs and stuff like that, which, by the way, the IGs 
I love, I love you. I follow you on your Instagram um, and, and on both Instagrams. I follow you on your Little Miss Nasty, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. And, of course, uh, on your Instagram, Gina in the Eastern Block. And, and I love what you've done because during quarantine, you know, I was bored and you were just popping off on the same time. And so I would check in and, you know, you would be interviewing and, uh, somebody else from the band. And it was just always fun. I love your personality. Like, this song... I don't think conveys how just amazing your personality is because this song kind of conveys that you're dark. But when I like see you in the, you know, in the other platforms, you're so light and, and just so happy and joyous. Is that the true balance of your insanity? Yeah, actually I think so. In my dream of art and who I want to be and come across as I just gravitate so much toward this dark, twisted, over-the-top, shock, you know, crazy, wild woman. And I guess Mark could say, I kind of am that. But (laughs) at the same time, I am super flamboyant, light, I'm Sagittarius, I'm on fire, I want everyone to feel good, I love to be the light. And so there is that balance. And in art, I can be as dark as I want to be. In real life, I just want to be love, and so I'm not going to walk around, you know, in a depression cloud and bringing everyone else down or whatever. And I think the insanity... I don't know. What do you think about insanity? <laughs> well, obviously, look, I think we're both extroverts in some way. She certainly is an extrovert. She's a she's a trained dancer. Um, that's how this all started, you know. Um, so she's a, she's a, a performer, a, a visual performer. And we bring that on stage. We bring in our videos. We bring it to our songs. But there's a lot going on in our heads, you know, and there's a lot of stuff we've been through, good and bad. And, you know, we don't just want to uh, have a song that uh, that is just bubbly all the time and it's just full of fun and lights and greatness. We do, um, you know, certainly uh, have material like that. But this song, you know, the insanity, you know, cr- really speaks to the insanity that people who – you know, might be suffering with some sort of a mental illness or, or, or um, some sort of a drug addiction or alcohol addiction uh, often feel. And so we just wanted to touch on that and that, you know, we, we all understand that some more than others and sort of we're all the same at the end of the day. And that's what the chorus says. You know, at the end of the day, we're kind of all in this human thing together. So it's a little heady, um, but it's kind of an all-inclusive song. And, and um, I don't know, that, that was kind of the message, at least at least as I see it. Yeah, no, I agree. It was all about, for me, in a way, just everyone being locked down at the same time and people going through all sorts of emotions and depressions, anxieties, uncertainty. When is the world opening up? What What is going on? And we're all in that together. You know, it's not just one person. Everyone had to feel those feelings. Nobody's more or less than someone else when it comes down to something massive like that or individual addictions and whatnot. We're all in this together. You're not better than anyone else. Just, you know, a banker can be super depressed. A chef can have anxiety. Your mom can hate herself. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, no. I I, I totally get it. You know what I mean? Um, Even me. I I feel sometimes anxiety and and those things too. And, uh, you know, uh, I I even go through therapy too. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we all go through this. And uh, I think one of the most important things to convey to people is that you're not alone. And the most important thing is we all can seek help. You know what I mean? And it's out there. We just have to go out and and say that you need help uh, personally. Yeah. Yeah, And look, you know, we're not – the objective of Gene and Eastern Black isn't to be, you know, real serious all the time. But look, serious stuff happens in people's lives. And, you know, we've all gone through it in some way. So this song just happens to speak to that. Um, and, and we want people to know that, um, that they aren't alone. And in whatever little way we can do it and our contribution to making people feel like, oh, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe they've gone through this too or they're talking about this, so maybe I'm not just the only person here. I think that's kind of the objective. And it's just a song. song for them to bump in their car. It's also badass. Scream their yeah. head out, <laughs> rock the fuck out. You know, it's massive sounding and it's just something for them to have that release and apply it however they want in their life, whatever makes sense, who even cares. I mean, obviously we care, but take what you want from it and 
ride that shit. Exactly. And and speaking of fun, let, let's get into um, a very fun project that I love watching you, which is the Little Miss Nasty. Okay. Um, again, I follow you on both the Instagrams and and everywhere. And uh, if you're not following Little Miss Nasty on their Instagram, I highly encourage you uh, to do that. And not only that, but I just noticed, and, and I was a, I saw this from the very beginning when you started doing the School of Nasty, and and that kind of popped up. And I was super curious about, it, but I thought it was only for girls because I wanted to like join, but I was. And and I didn't know what to do because I'm like, well, dude, if I join, like, I'm gonna feel, I don't know. I, I, there was a lot of uh, anxiety that came across because like, I don't want it to feel like there's a guy in here, and and because uh, you guys are very sexual, you know what I mean. And I feel guys are sexual too, but you know, it, it's a it's very taboo, you know. Uh, to I'm roll out for a second here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's her. Now I'm gonna roll back in. <laughs> don't take my frame. <laughs> She just wanted me out like that. She just <laughs> right over. <laughs> but, uh, but, but let's talk about the School of Nasty really quick and how you guys were able to pivot uh, during this time. And congratulations. I just saw you did your 50th live stream, and it was to uh, your guys' own song, Hungry, which uh, we're going to play later. Talk oh, a little cool. bit about it. Yeah. yeah. So School of Nasty popped up. Pretty much right away, we went into lockdown, and I'm like, how can we connect with our people? How can we reach people, keep them inspired, especially in the beginning when shit was going off, and people were like, I don't know what to do, like, my life is over. So we launched right in, and it's been awesome. We have people from all over the world sign up, literally um, in Australia, they take class at 6 a.m. with us, their time. We have people in Costa Rica, the UK, France, just everyone around the world coming together to get empowered and feel some confidence, break a sweat, get in touch with their bodies. It's in the privacy of their own home. There's no pressure to be on screen or I'm not like staring at them, judging and analyzing. It's very hands off, just play, watch and learn, Dan do well, your dance, thing. There are dance classes and yeah. some fitness classes yeah. also, but they're... I'll just interject uh, for a second, then you can talk. But they are, they are, um, they're dance classes, some fitness classes, and then we're, we're going to broaden the uh, offering soon as well to offer some other things that uh, only Little Miss Nasty can do, and they're sort of twist. Yeah. You but like you said, you were, you're a man, so you might be afraid to sign up or nervous and embarrassed, but we have men in our classes. It's not just for women, it's not just for professional dancers. We have People who've never danced in their life sign up all the way to a top professional dancer in Los Angeles signing up. And so the range of people in our classes is just extreme. And it's awesome. It's a community. These people look forward to it every Sunday, as do I. And it's sort of like our church. People call it church or Sunday school. We just come together, do our thing, and leave feeling amazing and have something to work on and a goal to work toward and a routine to perfect on their own time. And so, you know, it's fun. And how fun was it that you, this 50th episode, you were able to do it with a hungry, you know, a, a song that you guys came out with. And by the way, your first music video uh, from uh, little miss nasty as well. Talk to me about yeah. that. I mean, that was pretty cool because we've done all the songs, you know, 50 classes. I had to create 50 routines to 50 of the best songs that are Little Miss Nasty inspired. And as soon as Hungry came out and we were choreographing for the music video, I was like, this has to be a class. You know, our following wants to learn our choreography. They would love this. We're throwing it in. So as soon as the video dropped, we lined up the class shortly after and it just happened to fall on the 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. and so it was really fun, and they they loved it. Yeah, I, I, I love the video as well, and I'll have post that video on the show notes so people can say, I love the chorus, which is, I know you've been watching me and dreaming of my body, and I was just like... You know, and it was weird because it took me to a different place. You know, it took me to this, this the place of sometimes when we're just 
kind of scrolling through Instagram and we're checking out all the model section. You know what I mean? And you're just like, yeah. it really took me there, you know, but I thought that the production was amazing. It seemed like you guys uh, did it at a very cool studio uh, for that shoot. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the, the video process and recording that? Yeah. Well, so to start with recording, it was definitely interesting because we recorded starting in August through the fall. So we have more songs than just Hungry Coming. But two of the girls live in Las Vegas. We live in Los Angeles along with one of the other singers. And so how are we going to do this? We recorded in three different studios, <laughs> three different sessions. Mark and I produced via Zoom the girls which was their first time in a recording studio ever. So we're behind the screen like, okay, you can do it. Go in there and kick ass. And just, we made that happen. We all recorded through Stephen Slate's. Hey, this technical aspect. My <laughs> friend Slate has a really successful company. and He makes this microphone. You're talking about music production earlier, yeah. doing it at home. He has a microphone that you can basically, it's boring stuff. Anyways, I made sure that all, since the girls were in different cities and different studios, we used the same microphone, the same technology um, uh, to to capture the same vocal quality. So, because often people record in different cities and different studios, it's it's all different. You have to really work hard and post to make it all work. This helped this helped make it work um, just on a technical, boring level. But if anyone out there is into it, I like you. Yeah, but the cool thing about this microphone, I don't know why I'm like going on this whole <laughs> Steven Slate pitch, but. Earlier, we were talking about the plugins and how you can make the guitar sound vintage or whatever, whatever. This mic, you can record into it raw dog. So just I can't wait just to see <laughs> actually sends us money for this. I know. He's going to send us money for this. Um, <laughs> well, you yeah. can – Mark knows more. It's like, it's like you can you can pick – you can if you wanted to sell like an old RCA mic or an old vintage microphone from the 1950s you know, or something, you can select that setting. It's really cool. It's very versatile. Yeah. yeah. So there's like 10 settings. You just pick so. your mic style. So okay. funny that you're talking about I this. know. So about the video shoot. Recording, yeah. It was fun, weird, in quarantine, social distancing, bada boom, bing. Then we finally all had the chance to get together once things were milding out. So we had the Vegas girls come to L.A. We were here ready to rock. We're all COVID tested free, ready to go. What is it called? FD Studios, downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, FD Studios. They have these sick rooms. All of them are different. They're very affordable. We picked this big blackout room with the hexagon hallway, and the rain room is involved also. And so we really picked that space because there was so much to work with, and we knew we could create like five different scenes within one space. And so, like you'll see in the video, it kind of looks like there's multiple locations, but it's not. It's just one room. So that's really why we went there with that. And then it just like looked a little fancy and polished. And so we're like, fuck it. Well, it's better than doing it in our garage. Yeah, you know? no. <laughs> this is this video. Because we, you know, um, we had to step it up for something. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just figured this had, just had to have a little bit more of, a, of icing on the top, you know? Yeah. And it comes out absolutely well. Um, really great video. Uh, highly encourage everybody to watch it. Very cool. Uh, one of the last things I want to talk to you about uh, before we get out of here uh, with Little Miss Nasty is something cool. I saw that you guys are actually looking for Las Vegas and L.A. Uh, people because you guys are going to be doing residencies out there. And you guys are looking for people that do aerial, contortion, fire, uh, stuff with the pole, circus, musicians, uh, you name it. Uh, you guys are looking for... For that, is this because you guys are uh, expanding the brand even larger? Yeah, I think as soon as 2020 hit and we had that time to reassess everything, we were like, this is our chance to redo everything. We want to come back with a huge bang. And we thought, like, one month later, our shows would be back. So I actually did a casting call like this way back in the beginning of quarantine, like, searching for we just want to diversify our production we want to bring in some new crazy stuff you know when we go on tour we want to be a circus freak slash dance show slash performing our own songs just like every visual visually stimulating thing in your face 
And earlier we were talking about being dark and twisted and how I love that. Well, the Little Miss Nasty show is super dark and twisted. And so I just envision like crazy contortionists, monstrous girls doing wild stuff, but still sexy, you know, aerial girls floating down from the sky, just bigger and better. We're really looking to up this production and come out with fucking bang. Well, also Little Miss Nasty has had no real opportunity in the past really four years to really just have the space and the time to really develop because Little Miss Nasty has been doing constant residencies in LA. We have a Vegas residency show, San Francisco residency shows now, and also just national tours. We've done like seven or eight national tours um, with bigger artists and also just Little Miss Nasty as headliners. So there hasn't been a lot of time to do much. So all of a sudden this this thing happened, this COVID thing. And, and you know, I, I, I co-produced the show, so that's why I'm chatting about this with you. Um, Thankfully, I'm not in the show, but we had the opportunity to, uh, to, <laughs> Little Mr. Nasty. we had the opportunity <laughs> right? I'm to, to do that. <laughs> see the cats out of the bag. Wait, <laughs> Top secret. Coming next. Um, anyway, we had the opportunity to really focus on, uh, re, rebuilding the show and envisioning it, reimagining it, incorporating more exciting visuals and light shows. And so yeah. we, we've got, we got pretty far along in that process. So we're ready to, to hit the go button pretty soon on that. Yeah, and overall just taking the submissions of these creative talent people from Vegas, L.A., now we have a bank of performers who are interested in the brand, so anything that comes up in the future, I can go, oh, let me go check the aerial list, see the list of girls and boys who submitted, and use them for something, and so it's a great opportunity if you want to express your interest in the brand to just send a submission and you'll be in our files forever and you know let's rock <laughs> i just want to be in your file forever i <laughs> i can't do anything but uh <laughs> you know i'd be done your submission. <laughs> right i'm like hi i'm turtle and um i just i i just have glasses that's that's my submission <laughs> perfect we can like shoot beer at your glasses during the show <laughs> that'd be cool that'd be fun <laughs> <laughs> For more information, littlemissnastyofficial.com. And, of course, if you want to get involved in uh, the School of Nasty, schoolofnasty.com, make sure to go check them out. And, of course, Gina and the Eastern Block.com. I know there's a lot going on with you. And last question, how do you manage all these all these things together? It seems like you have a lot going on. It's full time. I mean, it's our full-time job. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, it. that's what it is. We, we, we work. Um, all day, all night. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> but it's labor of love, generally yeah. speaking, so it doesn't really feel like work. You know, we are we are DIY. We always have been. Um, we outsource a little bit here and there, but we, we by necessity, have learned, Everything. you know, programs <laughs> like, of course, Photoshop, or like Premiere, you know, Adobe Premiere for editing, um, you know, certainly I, I know all about music production, so that's kind of a, that's kind of a helpful thing. But like we, you know, we've learned how to, we've had to learn how to do things, how to book tours, um, how to do all these things sort of on our own. And, um, you know, that does take a lot of time, but like I said, it's a labor of love, so it doesn't really necessarily feel like it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. You know? It's definitely a lot of work, but like he's saying, it's inspired work. And so my to-do list, when I look at it, nothing is like, oh, I have to go do that. It's like, you know, book girls for this amazing job, create the music video, get all the costumes together. Just like things that people would look at and be like, oh, I'd love to do that, you know. Like we love what we do. And so it's easy to wake up, grind all day until, when do we stop? Like one in the morning, basically. But it's it's so fun. It's like play, you know. It's really the life we want to live, and we're creating it. So I think we're really lucky that we have these opportunities and like enough balls to just go for what we want and ride it out. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. You have so much balls. The cops are coming after you. <laughs> you better watch out. Where do you live? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> it, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it definitely. <laughs> Oh man! Oh. Um, uh, again, Gina and the Eastern Block dot com, Little Miss Nasty dot com, and of course, School of Nasty dot com. Uh, my guest has been Gina and Mark. 
thank you guys again for uh, coming in the show. I, I, I truly do appreciate you, and I'm so glad that we could reconnect after all these years. Uh, lastly, we are going to leave with Hungry, and if you could just tell me a little bit about that song. All right. Hungry, Little Miss Nasty's debut song. We wanted something diverse, cross genres, a little nasty hip hop flavor, some dark, heavy guitar on top, some EDM splashes, sexy vocals, nasty hook, just something fun, playful. And some beef. And some beef. There's a beefy <laughs> ending. You know it rumbles. Don't beefy forget ass. to bump it. Fuck. Thank you, there you go. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, again, for more information, please uh, check out Gina and the Eastern And of course, Little Miss Nasty Official.com. And of course, School of Nasty. And here it is Hungry. I love-